today's adventure brings me to Antelope Island State Park as a recording of the Saturday, June 4th, 2022. And Antelope Island has a lot of bisons. Now this is not a real bison. This is a piece of art here. It has a crane painted on the side. Pictures are great. But please do not climb on the bison. He and his paint can't handle it. Thanks. I should also notice, I also point out, there are a lot of gnats and bugs out here. In fact, there is an entire swarm of gnats right there. And they seem to be getting getting thicker. I don't even know if they translate to the camera or not, but there's a lot of gnats circulating around. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. I will be spending time with my family, my sister, her husband, my mom, and my dad. It's been a little family time. Just traversed over a four or five mile bridge onto what I hear is the largest island outside of Salt Lake in the Great Salt Lake, Antelope Island. Don't know if there's any antelopes, but I know I'm gonna see a plethora, hopefully. Not only gnats, but also bison. I'm inviting you to join me. It's gonna be a good day, shall you? I'm also realizing my mom has this shirt in two different colors. You were wearing the red one the other day, and now you have it on today. What day is, what day is today? Who cares? Who cares? You're retired. You get a picture? <laughs> I am walking into a congregation of bugs. There's a lot of bugs. Look, hey, look at this right here. Okay, so you can kind of see. Well, I don't know if it shows up as well on camera per se, but look at the mountains. Very beautiful. The snow capped peaks of the, of the mountains down there. Now I had heard that they were gonna need to have bug spray. Didn't bring any bug spray. And maybe I should have listened to advice of what I was reading online and from locals because there are a lot of bugs. Look at this. I was gonna put my hand there, but there's a big biting fly right there. The road to nowhere. As you survey the vast expanse of Inland Island, Inland Stoke, the causeway fading off into the distance. Imagine the days before the causeway existed. I'm trying to get out of these bugs. Nearly seven miles of tangy salt water separated you from the mainland. Wow, there's a lot of insects here. <laughs> there's a lot of them over here. <laughs> there's a whole swarm. I think they. I think they smell our blood or something. All right, gotta drive over to the visitor center. Here is a sign of a buffalo or a bison. It says, caution, do not approach. And you can see the salt there on the lake as well. Get some photos over there, We're trying to avoid the gnats before they catch up with us. Also, there are these which are prominent in the area, brine flies, actual size, one quarter, one quarter of an inch? Oh, okay, this is expanded, so one quarter of an inch long. Noxious brine fly. And this little area here is known as Lady Finger Point. There's a sign back there designating that. A lot of hiking trails out here too. We're not gonna do too much hiking, obviously, but I'm just gonna drive around, see what we can see. Just have a good day. You can see the water is there, and this is all, which I guess you call the beach, which is just very salty sand. And the California gulls of Egg Island have made their way to Utah. The seagull is the state bird. Not in California, but here in Utah. Not really seeing too many seagulls though. I don't see any. Here is a desert flower. Beautiful desert flower here. 
They got this guide map here. It kind of shows the layout of the land crossing that bridge in. There's Lady Finger Point Trail. It just shows how expansive. Where are we at? We are right up here. Uh, let's see, we're at the visitor, visitor center. Visitor center. Visitor center now. But it just shows like how. Oh, there's a buffalo. See a buffalo? Yeah, right there. Oh. Why does it have holes in it? Oh, there's the bridge too that we drove over. Probably like a four mile bridge. Oh, this is called Sacred Dreams. And there are some real buffalo. And I saw them off on the distance, but we're gonna drive a little closer to them. And when a bison stops, what it's doing to look at you, back away. If the bison raises its tail slightly, it is aggravated, back away. If the tail was raised high, the bison is ready to charge. And this is a state park, Utah State Park. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Also windy out here. And it was $15 for a car full to get in. So we packed all five of us in my car. $15 admission. This might be easier, this won't blow around in the wind. A lot of different trails and driving areas and a lot of parking spots too. You can park off and walk and see stuff. This is a mule deer named for their large mule-like ears and they are native to Utah and Antelope Island. So this is why they're called a mule deer. There's a bird perch right there on that rock. What's chirping? For a moment. It's beautiful. I love it. Sing a song. Just that one, huh? That is a pretty neat design on that rock. Okay, there are buffalo corrals here. So I'm gonna, I would imagine most of the buffalo are either in the corrals or over here on buffalo points. So we're pretty close to where all the buffalo will be, where they will roam. And where the deer and the antelope might be playing. Oh, inside here I'm getting some country bear jamboree vibes. I don't think they're gonna start talking and singing, however. This is inside the visitor center. Going through here. Brine shrimp life cycle. Brine, there's little shrimps down in there. See them swimming around? And just to show the expansiveness of the island, we're not gonna cover every every inch of this today by any means, but because just this over here is pretty expansive, but it goes on this whole this whole section here. You can even see it's got a little mountainous areas of it as well. Okay, now here's all the insects we have to be on the lookout for. Midge flies, which are non-biting. Mosquitoes, common through Antelope Island. Biting gnats. Okay, no seams? Present in sandy vegeta vegetative areas, not along the shoreline. And then brine flies, which are non-biting and harmless. Peeking out this glass window, this uh, birdhouse. Oh, that is a birdhouse. I think so. That's been there for a few years. This is dedicated to William S. Holt. Passed away in '89. He was the founder of Great Salt Lake Park and the first chairman of the Great Salt Lake Authority. And there's a lot of information through here, like looking at this angle across the bridge and these mountain peaks. Over there was Mount Ogden, Ogden Canyon, Willard Peak, Little Mountain. And over here in the visitor center, 
probably be bad. The best thing I can recommend is to cover your body like long sleeves, long pants. And one of the employees is talking to someone that called in, talking about the biting gnats and just giving, net, yes. giving them some advice on what to wear, yeah. long sleeves, head net. This is in the gift shop also in the sure, information center. Okay, you both have purchased this crushed penny. Yes. That's an antelope on there. <laughs> oh, you don't get but to choose. We could have chosen. <laughs> oh, you can <laughs> choose. You didn't realize you could choose it. No. Well, you're only out fifty-one cents. You could. I mean, you could probably put another one in. That's all the change we got. That's all you have. Who carries more than fifty-one cents in change? Who carries? Honestly, who carries change at all anymore? I don't know. All right, up on the hill is an antelope. I had to zoom way in to see the antelope. There's another one over here. Another antelope right there. And have also found the first bison of the day. In fact, there's quite a few out here. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit. Get a better view, or attempt to. Got three of them right there. Look at that. I'd say probably 150 yards off the road. And then it probably same distance that direction. A few more. Half a dozen more over there. We are all assuming that over there is the city of Salt Lake, across the water. It's pretty neat, because of the reflection of the water, you can see the mountains as well. All right, commuted eight miles from where we just were. This island is very big. So eight miles down is the Fielding Gar Ranch, 133 years of ranching history. And then it's about another five miles to the tip of the island, but we will not be going there because the road is unpaved from that point and there's really nothing out there. This is the last bit of civilization, if you will. Here's what? That view. <laughs> One of these solar panels is missing over here. I didn't realize they could jump eight, up to eight feet. We've got some farm equipment here. This is not an active ranch anymore. So I could find a little bit of more information about it. The Fielding Gar Ranch, a timeline of history, first settled in 1848, represents 133 years of Western ranching history. While exploring the ranch, you will learn all about its colorful past and discover the many periods of history represented here. The Gar Ranch is a great place to explore change over time and compare historical periods with one another. And it should be noted there are definitely all through the island there are plenty of accommodations for rest stops. For restroom breaks. Passed quite a few of them. A couple more up there on that hill too. And you can go inside here too, and they have all these little information placards. These tents were used to keep the newborn lambs worn, warm during cold nights. The metal frame of the tent here. A 
Oh, you can go up there? Yeah. There's nothing here? Yeah, it's just the old ranch that used to be here. A little history of the, the farming they used to do here on the island. Oh, a little door for the sheep to go in. I think it is sheep because it's talking about sheep sharing up here. Yeah, all this looks like textile, oh, yeah, look. textile machinery. Oh, getting the wool from the sheep. Yeah. Do you think you could shear 10,000 sheep? I don't know if I could. Oh, look, this is one of the, the bug nets over the face. Okay. <laughs> See that right there? It's like one of those mesh nettings. Oh, well, there's bugs. So they shear them right here and then put it on the conveyor belt and send it down. Okay. This egg, egg basket came all the way from Boise, Idaho. Do you smell that? It smells like sheep shearing stuff. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say the S word, didn't you? Be careful up here, you might end up stepping in some sheep shearing stuff that was back there. There was some that's, that's the joke of the day. <laughs> they do horse riding out here, but I don't see any horses. This might be the off season. No, we saw some poo. out. Yeah, there's fresh doo doo. Doo doo doo. Some old saddles and tack, I believe it's called. Up. So this would go, they put a horse on either side of that? Yeah, and this would be attached to the wagon, I think. Right? Yeah, I think so. The piece of equipment displayed here is called a log dog. It hooked into a log and attached to a harness so a team of horses could pull the load to a location. A log dog. That's new. I never knew that's what that was called. Getting over into the wagon section. Imagine trying to put one of those wheels back on after it fell off. From the late 1800s to the mid-1900s, advances in technology such as railroads and later motorized vehicles made the outsourcing supplies cheaper and easier to get. Consequently, ranch residents used cinder blocks and corrugated tin in the construction of the later buildings. Is it a cement mixer? Yeah. I wonder what they used to form the bricks, though. So. Okay, so here's the different. So you got the cinder blocks, and then you got the older style of the wall construction here. Got this boat here. Eventually trucks replaced the wagons. In 1952, a causeway was built on this sandbar. That's the one I think we crossed in on. I don't know. I don't know what kind of truck this is. This looks like a Ford? No, it's the International. It has a goat head on it? Or like a ram head? It's an old Dodge. It's a Dodge? Yeah. 
Uncle Todd Graham. <laughs> I would think. That's pretty cool. A lot of solitude out here. Very peaceful. Out here on the farm, on the ranch. Yeah, this is like a sled. See the sled style bottom of that? That's on how it commutes. You probably have the horses in the front. And the sled would go across. The old tractors. There's a Ford. Doing a little farming? What if it cranked up? I've driven one about this whole before. You've driven one like that? Yeah. I got the speeder. That's pretty awesome. Super cool. I love the birds chirping. There in the tree. Do a little lawn maintenance? Yeah. Driven one like this before. Have you? You driven one like that yeah. before? Back in the day? Yep, it was old models. The old what? <laughs> the old models. The old models? I think that might be current. Yeah, that one's probably. Huh. I think that might be, <laughs> that, that might be that might be a current one they use for lands for uh, mowing the yard out. <laughs> yeah, it's very unique. It's called New Osborne. Well, it's the name on the side of it there. It was made in Auburn, USA. This whole farm equipment so cool. All rusted out. Yeah. It's been sitting out here for decades. Looks like if you just put a little good bit of grease on it, it'd work again. Still work. Yeah, it lasts forever. Gotta wonder if that was moving or just for the photo op, him standing up there. That'd be hard to keep your balance. Residents used horse-drawing wagons on the island from 1848 to 1960 due to the cost of hauling fuel to Antelope Island. So up until 1960, they were using horses. Oh yeah, a lot of horses down here. There's probably seven or eight horses at least, maybe more. A couple of them feeding down there on the hay and then a few congregation of them right over here. There they are, just kind of hanging out in the shade. And a couple are down there too. The silo here, it's empty. Silo used to store grain, such as wheat. After the silos were filled, the remainder of the wheat was sold in Salt Lake City. Oh, looks like you could do a little roping over here. Oh, look at this. This uh, Can you go inside this? There's stairs up to it. This wagon. Some photo ops over here. You can go in there? Oh, you can practice uh, lassoing, right? Yeah. I have no expertise in the kind of feeling you do as quickly as you went and grabbed the rope. Yeah. Whoa, I didn't work. That's 
going to be Will Rogers. I don't even know why I'm attempting to do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Get along, little dog. Get along, little doggy. I don't even know it's a horse. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah, you got your... <laughs> oh. If you make the psh noise, it makes it go better. <laughs> Clearly, I do not know how to do a laugh. That's oh, almost had <laughs> spin down. Throwing a rope or making a pizza. <laughs> You're too far away. Oh, you did you. And it's you. Oh! You want to try it? No. <laughs> you Got did it. it. Got it. You boost. Yes. Oh, barrel leg Tommy. That's the horse's name, barrel leg Tommy? <laughs> That's what I just named it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what's up inside here. Got some plates, got some cups, got the pot, uh, coffee pot kettle, got the accommodations for the bed over there, the uh, box springs. Nice little accommodations, nice. Like an airstream. Kind of is. This is what we need to get, honey, instead of the RV. It's gonna be Adam's new large march. This will be my new large march. It's just no trespassing sign. It's been kind of riddled. Little holes there. Kind of like a little museum of sorts. Here's pictures of the That's the family? Yeah, it's a ranch foreman. There's a snow in there across the dry bed. Yeah. Construction of the rooms near the north of the house that we haven't been to yet. Got an oven over here. The barbed wire that fenced the west. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Here's the guy. Here's Gar. That's him? Oh, no, it's a caretaker. This shows how to make a horseshoe. The making of any item requires knowledge, obviously. I don't know how to make a horseshoe. And the type of metal used to the best temperature. Showing some horseshoes there. Some of the tools of the trade here. You would heat this up. I've been to Knott's Farm and watched them make the horseshoes and whatnot. And basically what they do is they heat this up with a fire and they take this after the metal is heated and then they will just basically bang it into the fashion that it needs to be and the design it needs to be because the hot metal can be bended. And there are some people on horseback right up there, rolling through the plains, riding the horses. Nice. Drove to another area of the island, an elevated area. Drove up a hill and there's this parking area where a few cars are. Parked mine here. It's known as Frari or Frary Peak. And there is a trail that goes a little farther up either that way or up there. But already pretty far up. In fact, you are here, which is where I'm standing at the moment near Dooley Knob Spur. And there's this little dirt path. You can go up to a ledge and you can look down across Salt Lake. Very beautiful. Look at this. The expansiveness of the mountains.
those are the hiking trails there. You can see the dirt paths that people have carved out by trotting up the side of the hill up to the very top. I even see a few people. Yeah, that is up there. That would be a magnificent and tiring view for all of us to climb up there. We're, we're in a pretty good, we're in a pretty good spot from here. Dad wanted to climb it, I'm pretty sure. Dad's gonna climb up there? Yeah, that's what he was just talking about. He says, I wish we had more time, I'd climb up there. This is an amazing area, this island. Antelope Island. I only saw two antelopes so far. And maybe six or seven bison. Buffalo. Bison slash buffalo. The view is astounding. Salt Lake over there. Salt Lake City over there. If my coordinates are correct. Just nice and peaceful out here. And bugs. Not as many bugs at this spot than there were on the way in. That was that was something else. Some of the plants that can be found here in the bat country, they call it. Not bat, but back, B-A-C-K. Refrain from picking flower blooms. Many of the plants are critical food sources for the island's wildlife. Quite a few, like sagebrush, milk, vetch. We got a fiddle neck. A broom snakeweed and a spreading flea bane. Looking over at the mainland, the shoreline, and the town and cityscapes. Going across that mountain range, snow capped peaks of that mountain range. Oh, there's a fly in my ear. Why am I here? And the sign going down this incline said 23% grade. That's the percentage. I want to walk up here to this little hill, look down. Oh, there's a fly right there on my hand. Look, look, look. Right there. Don't bite me, fly. Don't bite me. Please don't bite me. <laughs> it's still on me. I thought just shaking my hand would help. This is like a magnificent spot, looking over the top of this. I don't know if standing there would be wise, probably slide down the side, but pretty awesome. Look at that. See the cars going up and down. Gonna head out this way and then it's like five miles back out of the island before going over that four mile bridge. Like 10 or 15 miles to get out from this spot. Hopefully gonna pass some bison on the way out. And I did contemplate standing on that peak, but I think the wisest thing is not to chance it. So I'm not going to, because that incline, not wise, not wise. Here comes a tandem bike moving down this hill. Just moving. But I pulled off at this spot because this is a bison beach. Right down there is a herd of bison on the water or on the, the salt sand beach before you get to the water. Right about there in the middle of the screen. I would say maybe four, five, or six or so. Zoomed way in, but they're down there. Having a nice beach day, bison. Bisons, what's the plural? I think bison might be a pluralized singular word as well. Now on the way out, noticing these boat docks over here, it's completely dried up. There has been a huge drought in this area for quite a while, but you see, that's where the boat should be. I'm gonna take this four or five mile commute out. Oh, there's a lot of bugs right here. They're right up there. They're right up there. A lot of bugs swarming around. Some of them. Oh, there goes some. Those are gnats. Oh, roll the window up. Roll them up. They are all out. This is something out of a horror film. For real. I want to roll the window down so I get a better glare, but I don't, want, I don't think I'm going to. There's thousands of gnats 
right there. And directly in front of me. What the heck? <laughs> it's a horror film. Look at this. <laughs> Night of the Living Nets. <laughs> Seriously, look at the left I and just look cannot come. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Tornadoes of bugs out there. Wow. Yeah. Look at the traffic approaching through this. Wow. That's something else. And we complain about love bugs in Florida. Yeah. My mom just sent me this. She took this <laughs> earlier. We first got there. A very candid photo of me trying to get away from from all the bugs. That's a good one. That one's for posterity. They were everywhere. And that's going to do it for today. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. <laughs>